Good morning, everyone. As, as people continue to join in, first of all, it's an exciting day in Columbia, South Carolina, and as well, and we're so excited to be offering such a needed uh, service to our participants. We have several uh, people who are, several organizations who are collaborating. So as we allow uh, the rest to get in, then we will start. Uh, this is a hour packed full of information, which uh, we want to be able to assist you in creating, establishing, implementing, and continue to involve with your business plan. So we're going to get started. Uh, I'm Shoya Tutwiler Dawkins, and I am uh, the owner of Tutwiler Dawkins LLC. We are a financial service company, and basically, uh, with, in addition to uh, tax preparation, we also provide uh, strategic leadership services. We are partnering with the Small Business Association, and Angela Brewer is on the line. Uh, the City of Columbia Office of Business Opportunities with Aisha Driggers here. I am so excited that we have Alan in the room, who is with the South Carolina Business Development Center. And there is Kate with USC uh, Technology Incubator. And of course, Ms. Cheryl Sally from the Benedict College Women's Business Center. So we're here to provide you uh, with information that we feel is cri is uh, critical for any time we're in business, but definitely this time uh, of of season because of inflation, uh, job labor cost, all of those different integrals that are involved in uh, creating and and keeping your business viable. This week will be ideas out, ideal deals, plans, and concepts, how we create a value proposition. Next week is going to be about your market. The third week is going to be about that financial piece to tie all of this together. And week number four is going to be packaging everything up, your, exec your exec executive plan, and making your business look as if it is a million dollars, worth a million dollars, because it is worth a million dollars for you and your business. Um, each collaborator in this, and we are uh, facilitators here, the, the goal for this is that it's going to be a collaboration between you, the audience, and us as facilitators. While we will walk you through the process, if you, uh, there should be a chat in the chat a actual workbook that we can follow uh, as it goes along. We uh, also are planning, a, I guess, a remedial remedial uh, concept so that we can walk the two piece to the two week plan before we're walking into that financial planning piece. The goal is to create you for you to be able to follow the process. Uh, there is a conversation with the collaborators or whether it's homework or pre-work. Uh, we don't care what you call it, uh, but the goal is take that workbook, take your concepts and walk um, through the process. I am not going to keep you long because we have an hour just to get a whole lot of information in, in, the, in the scenario. And then from 11 o'clock to 1130, that is going to be the uh, question and answer piece. So this week, it will be Cheryl Sally with the women, I mean, Benedict College Women's Development Center. I'm sorry, Women's Business Center. We got the developments and the business. And then there is the illustrious Angela Brewer from the U.S. Small Business Administration. We have to get that one right. So I am not going to keep you. I am your facilitator. I am going to give the podium the Zoom podium, as Cheryl would say, to the illustrious and the fine experts as it relates to concept and creating a value proposition. Cheryl and Angela, Angela good morning. Good morning. 
Good morning. Thank you so much, Shelia. I'm going to let Angela start us off this morning. Um, turn to, to pass the Zoom microphone over to Angela for a minute, and we're going to bounce back and forth and, and, and share information, share ideas about your business plan and the process. Go ahead, Angela. Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much, Shelia, for correcting it because I had my sentence all ready to go. We are not the association, we are the administration. But thank you all for joining <laughs> Thank you all for joining us this morning. As stated, my name is Angela Brewer. I am a business opportunity specialist with the South Carolina District Office of SBA. We have gotten past the PPP. We have gotten past EIDL. Now we're working on small businesses who need assistance with just getting their business started. So they're going to need a small business loan. And the first thing you're going to need, the first thing the bank is going to ask you for is a business plan. So guess what? We got that covered too. So today we'll be working on a start the process of getting your business plan in order so you can walk into a bank and successfully get a business loan to get your small business off the ground, up and running or expand it. Thanks again for you all joining us, Cheryl. Yes, thank you so much. I'm Cheryl Sally with Benedict College Women's Business Center. Uh, we are, and this is, and, and I'm gonna stop a minute because this was part of what I was about to say uh, uh, in, in, a, in a, some of the slides to come. But what I'm, what I'm doing here is a pitch about Benedict College. The who, what, when, where, how, and why. Right. And so and that's what your business plan is going to articulate, help you to articulate and write it. But we're at Benedict College Women's Business Center. We are primarily funded by the Small Business Administration. We launched back in September of 2020. We're located here in Columbia, South Carolina, but we do cover the state of South Carolina, providing one on one counseling. Um, information like what we're doing today with business planning, how to develop your business plan, how to develop your infrastructure, the dismanagement, positioning for funding, government contracting, so on and so forth. Um, and we, we, we do that by, you know, we have a staff, we don't do it alone. So we have this beautiful group of, of collaborators that's in the network here. Um, and it's, a, it's a, a, a more, a lot more resources here in South Carolina for your business. Um, we um, focus on women, particularly women of color, and to kind of summarize our vision, our mission, uh, our purpose, it's to be a gateway out of poverty for our socially and economically disadvantaged women, particularly women of color. Um, and we do, we provide the one-on-one -on -one counseling at no cost. And so our goal at the end of the day is to help our entrepreneurs, you know, develop their business, start their business, leave a legacy in the community. And so we provide those tools and services. So just what I did, it, it's, it's, um, it's, it's all coming from the plan that we first presented to the SBA, right? Um, the plan that I had to study, right? So that plan turned into a proposal to the SBA to give us the grant to operate the center. So that's why the plan is so important. And I had to study that plan to be able to articulate that. I'm um, gonna turn it back over to you. Angela, you can share your screen, but thank you so much. Thank you so much for, for being here today. So the idea, and then Angela, you can unmute your mic because we're going to share talk talk about this together. Also, we do have um, a, a few of the staff from the Women's Business Center. I think Mr. Donald White is on the line as well as uh, Kitwanda Cyrus and Kayla Lundy. They're on the uh, on the Zoom as well. So um, there's a you know Angela mentioned about using the plan for funding, um, but and not but, but, and you use it to know where you are today and to know where you want to be in the years to come. You know, what does this business, what do you want it to look like 20 years from now? So where you are today, where you want to be six months from now, six years from now, 60 years from now, um, what, what are the steps that you need to take to get there?
So this plan is going to help you to organize all of, it's your checklist. It's your organizational document to keep you focused on where you're going and how you're going to get there. Next slide. So we're gonna go through that today. How do you structure your business, the people and the partners, um, technology, so on and so forth. Um, you get, you use the plan to get funding, but like I said, um, if it, it, it's your it's your internal document, um, would you take a trip? Go ahead, Angela, you can advance to the next slide. Imagine taking a trip from here to California without a map. A map how, would you get there? Would you get there? Probably not. If you did not have GPS, you did not have a map, how would you get to California? So that's the, um, that's the big, the biggest important importance. That's the main reason for the plan. How are you going to get to your destination in this business? So, I, I, and I can tell you a lot of the people that um, I meet, you know, being a, you can't articulate who you are and introduce yourself to the world, to the lender, to your audience on Facebook, on social media, and and all of all of those different platforms. If you don't know who you are, and and what's your purpose for existing, um, what services are you offering? Um, are you a game changer in the market? Uh, be confident in what you're what you're doing and why you're doing it. So the business plan development process, it's your, and Alan mentioned it, don't say homework, but this is your time to research. This is the greatest investment that you can put into your business is your time researching, studying, and implementing, implementing the systems that you need uh, that's needed for your business. Um, just like the time you spend in school. You know, some of us, we were in school for what, 12 years, uh, 16 years, more, you know, 20 plus years in school. So, and that's to prepare you for life after school. This plan is your, your field work, as Alan said, this is your field work, your study time, but we want to, in school every day, you write down, you study, you and you write down the, uh, you take the test and you write down the answers. You do the essay. So right now we're doing an essay for your business that's going to articulate who you are, what you're doing, why you're doing it, when you're doing it, and so on and so forth. Next slide, please. And put your questions. Oh, Angela. Go ahead, Angela. I want to interject. The business plan is going to be a living, breathing document. During this portion of the, of the business plan, you're going to write down your history. Why did you start this? Did you sit in the kitchen as growing, when you were growing up with your grandmother, you know, for the bakers or the cooks or the restaurant owners? Bakers going to want to know what's your skin in the game. Why did you get started? Why are you writing this business plan? I used to sit down because they ask you for a history in the business plan. I sat down and I watched my grandmother or I watched my mom cook and I said, I'm going to do this. I mean, you have to put your heart in this. You can't just go out there and have someone do it for you because they're just going to Google what a baker do. They're not going to put your business in your business plan. And that's what the banks are going to want to see. They want to see you. They don't just want to see what a baker do or what a cook do. They want to see you. So make sure you look at and you put down in your history why you got started at an early age. I started baking at seven years old. I watched my mom or whatever you want to do. But make sure you put your history in here and you have goals that you want to set in your history, in your business plan, why you got this started. So when you get started, when you go sit down, when you expand it, because like I tell I don't do a lot of counseling. But I speak to people all the time because they call our office and I refer them to our resource partners. But this is something that you should look at every six months to a year. And you should update your business plan often because you should set goals for yourself. So those are the things that you want to reach in your plan. Absolutely. Absolutely. It changes and it grows, just like Angela said. The plan will change and it will grow. It, it turns into it's a strategic plan. And just a real, a little nugget, I mentioned um, that we had to write out 
you know, this is for some of the folks who are looking to be nonprofits. Let's say they're nonprofits, right? Um, your pl business plan is your foundational document, right? Once you lay out the plan, you extract information from it to, to create your website. You extract information from it to create your marketing collateral, your brochures, your capability statement, if you're selling to the government. Um, so it's your foundational document and it can transform into a grant proposal. You know, I, I get so many people asking, do you know any grant writers? Do you know, you know, do you, um, do, do you, uh, how do you do this? And how do you do that all the time? Um, well, and the first thing I tell them, do you have a plan? Do you have a plan for your organization? Because in grant proposals, and I'm kind of veering off a little bit, but in grant proposals, it is the plan. It's the, it tells who you are, what you've done, uh, you know, and, and your, what we have here, your personal, what you've done in the past, let's say if you're a startup, um, you don't have what the uh, government calls past performance, your business doesn't have past performance, but you have gifts, you have assets, and you have knowledge, and so on and so forth, you, tra you transform, transfer those things to your business. So Cheryl Sally Enterprises, um, that, that LLC is backed by 35 years of business planning, management, and technical uh, experience. So you transfer that, but where do you do it? So articulating that plan, um, we're located in, in Columbia, South Carolina. We, we chose this area um, because there was an opportunity there. We identified an opportunity. So what's your area of coverage um, and why do you do? And, and we're gonna get into the why you're doing it more in the market analysis. And I'm not gonna talk about that because that's enough, that's coming in the weeks to come. But I do tell you this, you, you have to study your farm, know your industry. Uh, and you, when you come to, and <laughs> I meet clients and I'm all over the place here, but I, cause I get excited, right? Cause I meet clients all every day, all day, you know, all the time. And I've been doing that for about 30 something years. But when you come, especially if you're already in business, I meet clients, oh, how long have you been doing this? Uh, I've been doing it since 2019, but they can't articulate the who, what, when, where, how, and why. You know, why, why are they doing it? And if they're looking for funding, how much do they need and when you're going to pay it back and so on and so forth. Uh, next slide, please. Go ahead, Angela. You have something to, uh, <laughs> I love your excitement. Yeah, I do get excited. I, I really get excited. I'm trying to contain myself because uh, I really want, and we really want as a collaborative, you all to get this foundational step. Um, uh, in, in, in starting your business or expanding your business. This is an off, oftentimes overlooked step. If I could tell you that nine out of 10 times, and I've been meeting a lot of clients for a lot of years, uh, they will not have a business plan. So how do you know where you're going with the business if you have not researched and thought it out? And you should be excited, just like I'm excited is, and don't let the business planning process and the written business plan intimidate you. This, you have it up here. You have, most of the time, if you're excited and you're passionate, you have a lot of what you need already up here. We want to help you get it on paper. We want to help you get it on paper. So, uh, Angela, <laughs> you got any, any time in? No, you have it, keep going. <laughs> and we have, like, say, our uh, y'all yeah, laughing at me. Uh, we have uh, Donald, uh, Donald on the line as well as uh, Kit Wander. They want to chime in, please do so. And Kayla, uh, the staff here at the Women's Business Center, we're all former or current uh, business owners. So, um, and they'll tell you that what I'm telling you, and 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 what we we all can tell you is this. It's, it's, it's a necessity, right? Uh, idea and concept. What's your vision? What is your vision? That describes what you want to accomplish. What is your dream? You have this image in your head of, of this grand, I call it the baby. You want to birth 
this baby from the moment that that idea came into your being, you want, you have an image of what it will look like 20 years from now. So what's your vision? If you look back, if the community look back on your business, what will they say about your business? And I have a little sample vision statement down here. Our vision is to become the number one choice when it comes to dental care service delivery in South Carolina and to be amongst the top dental care service providers in the United States. Um, sample, um, go out on Google, the World Wide Web. There is, you, there is nothing that you can't find out there. Now, everything is not good information, but you will find it and you will begin to see a common thread of information. And then when you compare that, com your research, you've done the common thread of information, what you find online, you talk to the service providers, at SBDC, WBC, SCORE, um, who did I miss? The um, Veteran Business Opportunity Centers. You have individuals at private like Shelia. You have the USC Technology Incubator. The list goes on and on with the service providers. Then when you talk to us and you tell us, okay, the, you know, this is what I've come up with. And then we will help you at no cost. I'll, I'll put that out there uh, to determine yeah, that looks good. That looks really good. And there's nothing that, that really excites me more than someone who's done some homework and research. And it's okay if you haven't, because that's, uh-oh, oh, homework. I use that word, bad word. And who's <laughs> done some field work. <laughs> field work. Go, go ahead, uh, Angela, uh, Donald, or Kayla, or, or Kitwanda, if you want to chime in. And your vision should encompass something that you truly believe in. Don't go, like Cheryl mentioned, sample, go out there and Google. Okay, it's fine to go out there and Google and get some ideas. But make sure when you come up with your vision or your mission statement, it's something that embodies your business. Mm -hmm. Don't, you know, don't, you know, Coca-Cola, I can't think, you know, the slogan, don't go out there and get, because that's not who you are, not what you do. Go out, when you think of your vision, think about, you know, sit down, take a minute, take a few days, and think about what you want to bring to the world, to South Carolina. Think mm -hmm. about who you are before you put it on paper, because once you put it down on paper and you put it out there in the universe, like everybody say, I can go out there and delete it. No. <laughs> once you put it out there, it's out there. And I'm a firm believer on what you say is what I expect. Because if I pay for it, that's what I plan on getting. Or I'm going to be angry. I'm going to be real, real angry. So make sure when you do your mission and you do your vision statement, you think about it before you put it on paper. Because people are going to hold you accountable for what you put out there and what you and what they expect. Because I tell people, I tell my kids all the time, you don't have to pay people your hard-earned money if they ain't giving you what you, you're paying for. So if you put it out there, make sure you can uphold or stand behind what you put out there because they're going to be expecting it. Mm -hmm. And your, your mission may change. Your vision may change at some point in time. And it's okay. It's okay that it changes. Because, but and the thing with the business plan, you that's your study guide, right? That's your that's your guide. So you want to, um, and we said earlier, it changes, it grows. It is a living document, but it's your checklist to say once a quarter, let me see, am I on point with what I said I was going to do with this business? Let me see, did I accomplish what I set out to accomplish? It's on paper. So you're not running around willy-nilly doing things that you have not researched, organized, and planned. It keeps you focused so you can measure if you are on point with the goals, the, the objectives, the tasks that you establish in that plan. And it's okay that it changes because certain things, you once you get in business, and all of the all of us who have been in business, you realize that, oh, this didn't. I, I plan to do this, but it's not working out too well. So I need to pivot. That magic word, that pandemic, the word that 
it has been emphasized more than ever uh, in our lives is that word that came out birthed out of the pandemic is pivoting well and that's what sometimes you have to do but write down in, in research uh i have down here um, Sally uh, Dental Group is established to be the first first class dental practice providing services and solutions for emergency and general dental dental needs. Um, so keep it focused with your vision. So the plan helps you to stay focused. It also helps you to stay organized. Um, and imagine, and this is a, a I was trying to put this right. As you do your business, if you're not focused on where you're going and how you're going to get there and the steps you need to take. People will come, they will distract you. You become easily distracted. You'll get way off course as to where you're supposed to be going and how you're supposed to be getting there. Somebody come up with the idea because you're, and we, do, we get it all the time. What do you think about this? You know, what do you think about that? This will really increase your profits you will get a lot of lot of um a lot more revenue if you add this to your business and that may be something for you to consider because i didn't i'm, I'm about to go somewhere else now about uh diversifying your your service your income stream diversifying your your product offering and things like that we'll get into that a little little later um next slide go ahead angela so, yes. this is alan before you move to the next well um Go ahead. Just add that, you know, what Cheryl's talking about is a lot of times um, when you're starting a business, you're trying to find revenue everywhere. Mm -hmm. And people will come and present opportunities to you that are opportunities for you to make money, um, but they're not opportunities that help you execute on your vision and mission. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's, it can be easy. You can get easily distracted by revenue. Um, when you're in the early stages of your business. And so having a mission and vision statement that helps you stay focused on what it is you're bringing to the marketplace is really critical because it helps you to figure out what to do, but also what not to do. Um, mm -hmm. A lot of times we see small businesses that have mission and vision creep um, that, you know, um, based on an example that Cheryl mentioned, you know, 12 months, they go back and look at their business and they realize they're not doing half of what they intended to do. And they're utilizing resources in a way that's not intentional. Mm -hmm. well, part of what we want to present through this um, series is the focus on being an intentional business owner, right? Mm -hmm. The focus on using your resources, your time, your money, um, your team, um, the ecosystem that exists here to help you move your business in the direction that is not only where the opportunity is, where the opportunity to meet money, you know, to, to gain revenue and to serve people, um, but also that resonates with you and who you are from a mission and vision perspective, because it's tough, right? Being a business owner is tough. And when your why is driving your business, it makes it easier to stick to it, right? And so, I just want to elaborate and you know and echo what Cheryl was saying about um, mission creep, opportunity creep. People are going to bring you opportunities to make money, but really having an understanding of the opportunity fits what you're wanting to do. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, and going back, um, Angela mentioned it a little while ago. Um, get your get your paper and pencil out, and or your your laptop or your phone. Use the phone. Uh, start journaling. If you're if you're new, if you're startup, start writing down before you uh, get it out to the world. Like Angela said, start writing down everything you find out, right? And all of this information that you write down, that you jot down, it has a place in the in the business plan. Just like every piece of furniture in your house, it has a place. So um, all of your um, some great, great comments in the chat. All of the things that you find out in your research, because now you're, you're a private investigator, right? You're a private investigator about your farm, your industry, your farm, farm, and you want to write down what you find. You want to write down what you, what you want to do um, with your business. So start journaling, if you will, 
Um, and then that journal will can transfer to and format it in your business plan. These are just sample mission vision statements here that I just grabbed offline um, to help craft your idea, your mission, your vision. And another thing I want to add, while you're sitting down and you're thinking about what you want to do, what your mission, decide who your competitors are and visit them. See what they offer. So when you are writing your mission statement, you're writing your vision, you're writing your business plan, this is what you're going to do. You don't have to name your competitor right now, but you are going to have to name in your business plan. But right now, you don't. when you're doing your history, your mission, your vision, look at what they do, what they offer, and then think about what you're going to do different, what you're going to do better. So that's where your mission and your vision statement come in when you're planning and you're looking, looking over. Go out to some of your competitors. Go, um, go to McDonald's if you do McDonald's. Go to Burger King. Go to Zaxby, Chick-fil-A, all these different places if you want to do a restaurant. Go to the different hospitals if you want to open up a medical center. Look at what they do. Look at their staff. Look at, you know, when you're envisioning what you want to do, that's how you get your ideas. You don't have to copyright it. But you need to see how they're running so you can know how you will be running, how you are going to offer something different to the world. Mm -hmm, absolutely. And we're going to get in that. All of that is a part of, of that market analysis section. And we'll get into that. I think that is what what session is that? Is that the second one? What? Fourth one? It's the second so session. We'll, we'll, we're going to take a second. real quick dive into the market analysis. Um, but you should know your marketplace. And this is what we said earlier. Um, you have to know your marketplace better than anybody else um, and how you're going to penetrate that market. But I'm not going to, I'm not going to even go into, that's not my lane. My lane is this, the startup part of this business planning. So we have the experts that's going to talk about marketing. Next slide, please. But the, the whole point though, is to put on your private investigator hat, your field work hat, about this business, uh, whether you're starting up or whether you are existing business, because things change. You need to know what's coming down the pike, pike for pike for your business. What's coming? What what are things to come? If um, so, you have, you always have to stay abreast of what's coming down the pike, and this is where that that the SWOT analysis, and we're going to get into that a little. In, a, in another session, because uh, I noticed someone put that in the comment as well, that SWOT analysis, but then what are the potential threats? Um, uh, how will technology, how is it changing? How is that gonna impact my business? Business structure, foundation, and system. I know Mr. Allen Brown is gonna chime in now because this is, this is what I am a stickler for, and this is what you're going to flush out in that plan. Now, have, we have your mission, you have your vision, you have your purpose, um, you know, who you are and the services that we're going to products or services you provide. But what about your foundation? There is not a house or structure of building built, number one, without a design, architectural design, right? That's, the, that's that map that you use to build that house on. Um, there's not one built without a foundation. If the foundation it laid, the house is gonna fall. I'm gonna say that again. If the foundation it laid out in writing, the house is gonna fall. The minute the hurricane, tornado, which we just had some, um, and we see that even the best laid structure sometimes can get torn down. So self-educating about business systems, business structure, which creates the infrastructure for your business starting up. And in that business plan, the systems that I'm gonna talk about in a few minutes become their sub plans within the business plan. But you need to self-educate and know. Why? Well, I don't know, mommy. I don't know. Uh oh. Yeah. <laughs> you need to self-educate and know. Number one, what systems do I need in place? 
Number two, how are those systems, how do they operate? Number three, how do I monitor those systems? So it is, is, is very important to get started. And the best time to do it is when you're getting started. Writing out the standard operating procedures for your business. It may be just a one pager starting out, but it will grow. It will grow. That's why we buy franchises because you're buying a business in a box. So you want to set your business up to be franchised, to be sold, so on and so forth. And I'm going to buy a franchise or I'm going to buy a, a, a business because it is organized, because it has a foundation, because it's turnkey. Um, I always say this if, 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 um, and I had this, we had this conversation at the office yesterday. You know, if, if you're missing from your business, seven days, 14 days, 30 days, if your business missed a beat because you're not there, um, then you're not a real business yet. You have a high-end hobby because businesses continue to run when the owners are absent and they run because systems are in place. They're in writing. Somebody has been trained on those systems. So it helps you to stay organized. It's for the growth of your business for the stability of your business and long-term sustainability, sustainability for your business and pro a positive net profits. I would suggest to you um, that um, the less organized you are, the less money you're gonna make. The less organized you are, it has a direct impact on your, your net profit. Okay, so this plan lays out, what do I need to do? Next slide, please. Yo, anybody wanna chime in? Uh, I think, um, <clears throat> excuse me, we're, <coughs> excuse me, I saw Kiki um, put uh, one of our, um, expert advisors here put something in the chat uh, and she currently has a business. I don't know if she want to chime in yet, but she did piggyback and stamp, uh, put a stamp on the, the, the systems and organizational, uh, the management and the foundation for the business. Okay, no feedback. So make, make a bind, okay, make a binder. This is what I have in here. Um, in the business plan that we are sending, that you we are providing for you all, there is a section that talks about these systems, right? Sort of like a little checklist, um, but they are sub plans. And when you start to write that plan, we want you to write, you know, on the accounting system. What accounting system are you going to use? Whether that's QuickBooks, and you have several out here, um, Peachtree, QuickBooks. I think one is what. Um, Zero, Zoho, so on and so forth. But what system are you currently using? Or what system are you going to use? Make a bullet point up under this section in your business plan, write it out. What have you researched about accounting systems? Write it out, what system are you gonna use and what's gonna be the process? Because let's say QuickBooks, for instance, you know, it's a software system to hold you accountable. Every penny that goes into your business, every penny that goes out of your business needs to be accounted for, right? So the standard operating, developing standard operating procedures for QuickBooks, eh, it already has them in there. You have the tutorials and the guides, but now you're gonna need someone to show you like Ms. Tutwiler Dawkins or another expert as it, as it relates to setting up your QuickBooks system. But so it has the procedures in QuickBooks, how to operate QuickBooks. But what it doesn't have, if you're going to hire someone, eventually if you're gonna grow your business uh, really, really grow your business, there's going to come a point in time where you need to hire somebody else, or let's say it's uh, maybe one of your first employees is administrative manager, and you trusted, entrusted them to make your deposits or collect money from your customers, so on and so forth. Um, or, you know, look at, so what is the procedure for making deposits? That needs to be, so you want to do your deposits every Thursday? That is a procedure. Every 
everything you do in your business and those of us who are already in business, there's a process that you establish. You might start out doing it kind of, you're all over the place. <laughs> but eventually you're going to you're going to get your your groove if you will on how you're serving your clients how you're serving your customers and so on and so forth but there's a process a chef or cook before you can um in before you end up with that cake there's a process to getting there writing down the, okay, I need to go grocery shopping. So when I go to the store, I need to get some flour. I need to get this. I need to get that. And then what do I do when I come back home with those ingredients? You know, what do I set the oven on and so on and so forth? It's a process that will come automatic to you in business once you establish that, but you don't write it down. You have to write down the process and we were talking about this in the office that in order for you, and this is the hardest part for most businesses and entrepreneurs, the, the, in order for you to work on your business and not work in your business, you have to stop and write the, uh, the procedures down so that somebody else can follow them. So that now you can go, you know how to, you gotta, gotta monitor, you have to monitor. You have to be able to check the checker. So you need to know how the system works in order to track and monitor the system. But <clears throat> in order to work on your business versus working in your business, that, that transition involves you having process, procedures, policies in place and in writing. Your marketing is a system. Advertising, sales, public relations. It is a system. I promise you it's a system. And you want to embrace technology as much as possible so that you can work smarter and not harder in these different systems. Uh, many years ago, I learned about Hootsuite. Hootsuite is a social media manager. And it may be many, many more on, 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 you know, available now. But that was one that I started studying because it will link all of your or your major social media platforms to, to you know, one platform. So I connected my Facebook, I connected my LinkedIn, I connected um, all of those different platforms, posted one time to Hootsuite, it posted to every, you know, it po posted to all the platforms. Not only that, it has a bulk message scheduler in it so that I can set up this Excel spreadsheet, which they call a CSV file. I can set it up, put the date, the time of day, what I want to say and the website address, I can set it up from now until December, all for it to post every day. That is a system. That's a system. That is a process because marketing, is, and oh my goodness, I don't want to jump ahead with marketing. I'm not going to jump ahead. I'm not going to jump ahead. Um, human resource management system is a system. Your greatest assets are your human resources, your employees, your subcontractors, or your volunteers, your, your, your employees, they're your greatest assets. assets. Uh, and they can make or break your business or they can cause you a lot of um, monetary damage if you don't have that system in place. And if somebody is not monitoring that system, uh, whether they're employees, subcontractors, or volunteers, they should, you know, they should have a packet like when you, when, if you've ever gone to work for anybody, there is first is a job description. There's a posting of that job uh, description. There's the interview process. There is the selection process. There, there are, once you decide, okay, this is the best candidate. How do you decide that? There's a process for deciding that, right? Uh, once you decide that, uh, that hiring, I may be jumping, you know, missing a few of the processes, but that's okay. You get the point. Um, once you decide that, then the onboarding process, the orientation process, all of that's a process. And they're legal. Obviously, there are things you need to be in compliance with as it relates to the IRS and um, Social Security, Department of Labor, so on and so forth. But everybody that touch your business, everybody employees, subcontractors, or volunteers, they need something in writing as to what your policies and procedures are. 
If you don't set the standards, others will set the standards for you. I promise you they will. <laughs> so um, you don't want that to happen. And uh, I, you know, you, if there's no processes, there's no organization, um, then there's going to be chaos and confusion. And more so, you're going to be, the money is going to be seeping out. Next, go ahead. Anybody want to chime in? Go ahead, Angela. No, keep it going. <laughs> <laughs> Ms. Sally, I, I can say something. Um, okay. As a business owner, um, you definitely want to, like you said, you know, have those processes in place because you got to think about it. You're not going to be at your restaurant or your business all the time. Who wants to work in their business seven days a week, 24 hours, and not have a day off or a break? Um, and um, I wanted to say E Myth Re Revisited is also a good book to read about where it teaches you how to work on your business and not in your business. Mm -hmm. And to, uh, and who are you? Miss Miss Wanda Cyrus. And what's your <laughs> so um, I'm I'm uh, Kiki. I go by Kiki by short, but I do have a restaurant in Columbia area, um, Kiki Chicken and Waffles. Thank you. And I also work for Miss Sally in the uh, Benedict College Women's okay. Business Center. With Miss Sally, we're a team, <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> we're a team, um, but this is this is this is a part. All of this in the the performance management system, um, pay raises. Um, yes, Aisha, one of our favorite restaurants. Absolutely, performance management system, um, administrative management system, uh, customer service management systems, operations management. All of these, you need to know um, because they they tie together. They will overlap at some point in time, um, and they most of them will have a dollar amount attached to them. What I've seen over thirty plus years, thirty five years or so, is when if I could trace back the reason why businesses did not make it. I don't care what type of business. Um, they did not make it or they had major hiccups in their business because one of these systems either was not in place, not monitored or, you know, so on and so forth. And it wasn't in writing. All I can trace every hiccup and every failure to the lack of having the systems in place and the systems in writing. So these are subsystems, sub plans that becomes that become plans of, by themselves in your business plan. So educate about that. Educate about that. Um, next slide. Yeah, Mike Michael Gerber is is a great, great, great business. I think an excerpt from that is he said in there. You know, McDonald's. McDonald's one of the the one of the largest business models that and longest running, <laughs> not the longest running, but it's been around here for a very, very long time. Uh, Mike Gerber says in, in E-Myth Revisited is that it has ordinary people that work in extraordinary systems. So um, you, the best or, you know, entry-level people, if you have a system in place, you can train almost anybody to run it, but have it in writing, have it in place. I already said key personnel. Who, who will you need um, to be by your side, to be on your team, to help you grow your business? What are their qualifications? Um, what, what, what job description do you need? Excuse me, attach the resumes in the appendix of what you need. And you're thinking about the future. You're thinking about here and now, but in Europe, a lot of times when we start out, we're wearing, wearing all the hats. We're doing all, we learn to do all of the, all of the different pieces, all of the different systems. Um, but as you grow, as you make money, get more customers, you have to hire. So know in the beginning where you, what you need to have in place, the job descriptions that you need to have, how can you measure if you don't, establish what they're supposed to be doing in your business. Even if they're, here, I'm gonna go back to the volunteers. We have subcontract agreements and so on and so forth. Um, and I have stories and I won't get into the stories because I think we're wrapping up on that. I mean, coming up on that hour time, but I can give you stories and stories of headaches and hiccups 
um, for, for not having the systems in place, just simple policies and procedures in place. And you will not believe that something as simple as cell phone policy, dress code policy, how do you answer the phone policy, so on and so forth. We take it for granted. We hire people, even if they're family, right? Even if they're family, even if they're friends, have your policies and procedures in place so that they can follow them and you can measure everything that's being done um, in your business. Next and one slide. thing I want to add is make sure your employees know your visions, know your value, because if your employees are not up on your vision, do not stand behind what you stand behind, they can cause you to lose business. I know it's been plenty of time I've gone places and had the worst customer service skill in the world, and I walk out. Yeah. So make sure they are operating according to your standards, because they will make you lose business. Absolutely. Um, and when you allow, and we could go on and on into the human resource management system, but like I said, they're your greatest assets. Take your time to um, have things in place to get to know the people who labor among you, right? Um, get to know who they are. Get to know what their personal um, their personal goals are. If you can, you may have a system in place to do that. And I, I thought of this many, many years ago. Um, of uh, entrepreneurship savings plan, right? Just like you have any other fringe benefit in your company. Because an employee or subcontractor or volunteer, they want, they look, they're looking at you. Like, I'm gonna use Kiki for example. And they they want, wow, I would love to have a restaurant like this. This is my dream, you know, to own my own restaurant too. And they may ask Kiki, how do you do that? That is the time for me, my light bulb go off. That's the time that I can duplicate my business. That's the time that I can potentially franchise my business and have what? Residual income, money making, um, my money making money for me while I'm sleeping, right? Um, but that's an opportunity. Oftentimes what I've seen is employer or CEO will frown against that. No, I don't want you to do it oh, because you're probably the greatest employee, right? But that's an opportunity. Put them in a man management shadowing program. Give them a certain amount of time because you already know how long it takes you to. Um, yeah, right, Mike uh, Ward. He said they scared that somebody's stealing their ideas. But guess what? You can duplicate. You can duplicate your business. You know what it takes. You can charge them a fee for getting them started after they've gone through your management program or business ownership. Um, you can even invest, you know, you can be, you know, have, I call it just like any other fringe benefit coming out of their check. If they're serious about it and you can tell that, uh, you know, put measures in place to really see if they're serious. Just like when we meet with individuals at the WBC, when we give them the homework to do, we can really tell who's serious about growing their business based on how they complete the homework, based on how they work on the business plan, how they do the research and so on and so forth. But employees who want their own businesses, probably your best employees because they're like sponges just soaking up everything because they want to learn this industry. But you can get residual income from them for years to come. Your children can get because now you've set it up um, like a, a franchise or not necessarily franchise costs a lot to get set up, but you can still um, set it up and have residual income. Go ahead, next slide. And this is just the organizational structure for um, future, you know, how you're going to have everything structured, the hierarchy, uh, so on and so forth. Next slide. Products and services. Ah, describe your services, describe your products. What are the features? What are the benefits of your products and or services? So when I am marketing, got the marketing plan and everything, and this, this is probably this is gonna come out in the marketing section, the business is not about me. Now, I don't need to be selling how great Cheryl Sally is in this, this business that I'm marketing, but what, how is my product or how is my service going to benefit you? the customer. What value is my product or service 
going to add to what you're trying to do? Is it going to save you time? Is it going to save you money? Uh, just what that, what is your value proposition to your customers? Your marketing message, your content is going to be wrapped around probably your value, your problem, the problems that you are solving for your customers. So in your plan, you're going to list those things. Why, why would I buy your product or service um, uh, from anybody else? For instance, I had a client come to me years ago, want to do a plus size boutique down in the Vista, right? And I'm like, hmm, very interesting. You know, I'm a plus size girl. I would, I would love to come to your boutique, but I've gotten used to shopping online, right? So I've gotten used to the stores that I, you know, shop with because they have some nice plus size, you know, um, items. So what's going to make me, and I live in Northeast Columbia, which is about 20, 25 minutes from downtown Columbia, what's going to make me get, get in my car and drive down to the Vista when I can just shop online? I said, so be creative. If you add maybe something that nobody else is doing, and I don't want to get into marketing, but what's going to differentiate you and what's going to be your value? Now, let's say, for instance, you add, we're going to do full makeovers for plus size ladies or men, you know, men, it may be men. I don't want to discriminate. So men or women, boys or girls, we're going to do full makeovers, right? For plus size individuals. And we're going to show them how to wardrobe. We're going to show them how to pick out the best patterns and, 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 and items that supplement, complement, enhance where they are, right? Um, if you do that, now, now you're getting into not only uh, selling me um, your items, but you're counseling me on what do I need to wear to look my best? Who does that, right? Uh, and you may do a full makeover. So this goes back into public relations. I read an article many years ago about a company in uh, Pennsylvania. It was a beauty salon. And I was reading this article because beauty salons are, you know, pretty common business models. But I was reading the article because the young lady owning the beauty salon, she did um, once a year, maybe twice a year, she held, she did full makeovers for women who were vic crim victims, criminal domestic violence. So she partnered with, let's say, a shoe store, clothing store, nail salon. Everybody she needed to partner with in that community who took ownership of that idea to give those ladies um, who were victims of criminal domestic violence, give them a full makeover. That was her give back. But so, and going back to my point, what is going to make me come? You could have a common business model. It doesn't even matter. But what value are you going to bring to the table? Write it out. Be creative. Um, any comments? I see uh, the ideabuddy.com is a great resource for brainstorming. Yes, brainstorm. Write your ideas down. What pain does your products or service relieve? Next slide. Any comments, Angela? No. You're doing great. <laughs> hey, Cheryl, there was a, there was a question on it. It says, uh, what if you're um, building a brand and have two businesses that you want to start? Should you... Should there be two separate business plans? Not necessarily, um, because now we're getting into structuring uh, and we do have some uh, legal, uh, Nexon Pruitt Law Firm provides pro bono services for us, uh, for the clients of the WBC. So, but you know, you think about the parent company and I can have multiple divisions in the company that may or may not be totally related. Um, so you can have one plan right, that had that off, have different service offerings, different divisions for that company. Uh, but, but no matter what business or what services or products, you still have to do the same um, organizational structuring and planning. So you can have different divisions, different products and services, almost parent company, uh, either subsidiary companies. And I, if it's totally, totally... Um, and I'm gonna go into, um, I'm, I'm going to share our website here. 
Uh, do, 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 do. Are you through with the slides? Say it again. Are you through with the slides? I can go to the website. Okay, it's the it's actually Benedict College, uh, the Benedict College website. But the ultimate brand, right? The ultimate brand. This is what I wanted to get to. Uh, it's what is your brand really? It's not the website. It's not the business plan. It's not the marketing collateral. But it is the customer's experience. What is the encounter? Angela touched on this. It's the encounter and the experience that your customers has as a as a result of doing business with you, your employees, your products, and your services. So this customer relationship management system, crucial system in making sure that at the end of the day, and this is what's going to really grow your business, that your brand is your reputation for doing business. How are you going to write out all the things you're going to do to make sure that your customers are satisfied? Now, you can say, well, you can't satisfy everybody, but you really want to rank high as it relates to um serving your customers and their experience what do they walk away with when they have done business with you what do they walk away with when they've done business with you that is what's going to grow your business and i put down here it's not the ultimate and or superior product or service but being making sure it's a consistent one um mike gerber in e-myth revisited he talks about that too we are creatures of habit and we get used to consistency doesn't have to be the greatest in the world, but you have to be consistent. If I go <clears throat> into any place, I want to see the same. If 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 it's a restaurant, or I want the, I want the same heat. I want the chicken to be hot every time I go there. I want it to taste the same every time I go there. I want the timeliness of the service that I get every time I go there. I want it to be the same, so that I know I have an expectation. And you have to meet the customer's expectation every time they do business with you. Write out what you need to do in your plan in order to do that. Because at the end of the day, that's what's going to help you sustain. Next slide. I need to move, move quickly. Uh, and these are other people in your network. Uh, when you're, this is a part of your, your field work. I was about to say homework. Your field work of getting to know and creating your team, your village that's going to help you and, and, and help you have a genuine interest in helping you succeed uh, in your business. Write, those, write that down, write those folks down who you need to talk to, um, bankers. Um, many businesses did not, were not able to get a PPP loan because they did not have a relationship with a banker. You make business, you make deposits in your business account. You need to talk to the banker. You need to have that list. First, you need to write it down. Who do I need to go see um, <clears throat> uh, in the next 30 days? I need to talk to at least three to five bankers. I need to make an appointment because this is what you're going to do uh, every week or however, how much time you have to invest in your business if you're just starting out. I need to make an appointment to go talk to some of the community partners, public partners that I need on my team, the accountant, the CPA, the, the banker, the attorney, and the mentor for the business. I need to go talk to them. Uh, and I would employ you that don't be intimidated um, because they're interviewing you. You're actually interviewing them because they need you as a customer. So don't be scared to ask the bank, Mr. Banker, how many, um, how many beauty salons have you funded over the past year? You know, how many, you know, micro, I'm a micro, I'm a startup. How many have you, do you all first, do you all, you know, do you all fund a lot of beauty salons, so on and so forth. I'm, I'm getting off, off, off schedule, but you get my point. Um, write that down in your plan. Who, you, who do you intend to um, have on your team? Map that out, your referral network. Who do you need to help you with this business, short-term and long-term. Next slide. It's all about relationships. All about relationships. I think we had, I wasn't monitoring the chat, but you can go to the um, Benedict's page really quickly. Angela. I hear you. Um, 
Uh, no, I was saying any 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 anything you oh. want to add, anything any of the other partners want to add uh, while you're pulling up Benedict's. No, not the um, not the uh, WBC, the actual college, Benedict.edu. So what? While she's pulling that up, what what comments? What questions that? Do you have for Angela and myself, or any one of the um, the collaborators that's on the on the uh, Zoom? So this, go ahead. Are you seeing this um, website? I am seeing it right. Okay. So Ms. Nini Terry, she has a question. I just see. I just saw that. Who? And before before we get to the questions, go to about us. I think it's under about. And go to, you see under Office of the President, strategic plan. I promise you, every major or, or organization has a strategic plan. And if you click on that plan, go ahead and click on it, uh, Angela. On the, Yeah, I think you can click on it within it. Because a young lady asked about, yeah, there you go. Uh, she asked about... Um, different things. Um, Are um, you seeing the plan, Cheryl? Yes, that's it. So as you scroll down, this is, you know, it talks about the vision, um, the strategy, uh, the key enablers, strategic revenue growth. Uh, and, and it goes on to talk about the history. Go ahead. And I want to get this certain section. There's one section in here. So this, this section as, oh, she's going kind of fast, but it talks about the different areas that's in your business. What are the goals uh, to strengthen academic programs? What's the objectives to do that? So in the different areas, because there, there are a lot of divisions in the college to make the college, you know, be what it is. Scroll, you can scroll down a little bit. Um, so I just wanted to share, every organization has a strategic plan. So our thing, we want you to start out with that plan and has started out in writing. So that's why we're here. You can stop, Angela. Just wanted to share. Um, go ahead with the uh, questions. What Good question? Good morning, y'all. Hi. Morning. Hi. How are my you? My name is Naisha, but everybody called me Nini. So that's why it's Nini Terry up here. But my question is about accounting. Do you guys have an accounting firm that you all can recommend to people who are in need of one because I don't have an accountant and I have been trying to track everything on my own and I know I'm not doing it the way I should be doing it. So if anyone has anyone they could refer, that would be greatly appreciated. Thank you. Thank you so much, Nini. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, and, and this is the thing, what you did, it, it I, I'm, uh, you asked, you know, the thing is, you know that I need to, I need to do better. I need to do better and I want to do it right. And so that's what you do. You, I got to search it out. Well, who's out here to help me? And help is here. Ms. Shelia Tutwiler Dawkins. You know, she provides services to our client. Now, she's not the only one, but she provides, she partners with the WBC to provide services to our clients at no cost to you to help you get your you get your system set up. Um, and we got she's gonna talk about that in her segment. But if you don't use Ms. Shelia, uh, she's an expert at what she does. Um, search out others that you, you want to use. But whatever you do, get it done, right? Because you want to be account, you want to know where every penny, every penny has a place that's going out. Every penny has a place that's coming in. And you want to not only know how to account for your money because it, it it plays huge it plays a big role in a lot of everything that you do right including getting money uh getting more money to grow your business but uh everything has a place and you cannot plan for where you're going financially unless you have that in place you cannot plan where you want to go so you just you just can't just I'm just going to grow a million dollars. I'm just going to have a million dollar company. I'm selling all these products. I have great, great, great services. How are you tracking that? How are you tracking that? 
<laughs> exactly. And I just recently um, got partnership with Walmart and registration approved with Hobby Lobby. And I got a ton of products and have no idea where my money is going to be going or like, you know, and I, I need some guidance. So, yes. So we're, we're here. Thank you. We're here. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you. Proud of you. So proud of you. But we want to make sure that that foundation is great because I always tell clients, it does not matter how much money you make. It does not matter how many customers you have. If you don't have a, if you don't have a firm foundation to land that on, you're going to lose a lot of money or you're going to be dead in the water. So we're, we're in the business to, to, to make money, uh, to be successful, to leave a legacy, to give back, all of those different things. Uh, go ahead. Sheila is putting her phone number in the chat. <laughs> So as we, uh, if you have any questions, we still can do that as well. But as we uh, begin to starting the wrap up piece, you guys have been provided a workbook so that the goal would be your pre-work, field work, homework, whichever one you want to call it. The goal would be for you to take what we have given you this week and kind of walk through that process, specifically your business structure and foundations, leadership and key personnel, as well as the products or services and or services. And what is your customer experience? We're going to take what we dealt with today to discuss what we're going to talk about next week, which will be all about the marketing strategy, your target customer, your size and your growth rate, uh, your external and internal marketing regulatory, financial barriers, and your ideal client, as well as your competitor. Because a lot of times we think about what we're going to do, but we forget about the person who's offering a uh, substitute or a compliment to our business. So we want to discuss our competitor. One of the things that most businesses don't realize is what we call the SWAT. What are your strict being honest about uh, yourself. What are your strengths? What are your weaknesses? Those are internal. What's your uh, external uh, opportunities, opportunities and threats? So doing a deep dive on your similarities, your 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 uh, differences. Why? Back to the why. Why would I want to come to your business instead of going to someone else across the street? So as we move forward, I will be sending out a, um, well, one of us will be sending out a link for Tuesday, the, let me look at my calendar, Tuesday evening, the 12th, the 12th at from six to seven. And this piece will be just about uh, what you have experienced doing week one. And week two, if there are, and it's not structured, so it's, it's a place where you can ask those type of questions so that when we walk into the finance piece, we can move the narrative and make that make sense as it relates uh, to dollars. So we do absolutely appreciate you guys. And it is, it is definitely something that we felt like uh, was an opportunity for us as collaborators and we wanted to be able to share our knowledge with uh, you as well. Uh, if the, are there any questions? Are they going to have to register for Tuesday, and they can just um log, just um, sign into the link? Yes, they they don't have to register. Just sign into the link, and I'll send that out to one of us who are going to distribute that. So there won't be any res, res, uh, any registration for that piece. It's um come in, bring your sandwich, bring your questions. Let's just enjoy it. Uh, bring your water and your Coke, and we'll just spend time together as we talk through, through the process. Uh, it will be at 6 o'clock from 6 to 7. It's not structured, so it's just basically we're going to go through those uh, through the two weeks and just ask questions that you may have come across as you're doing your pre-work pre or homework field work. or field work, whichever one you want to call it. 
<laughs> I, I am going to uh, actually give it over to Aisha where she can close us out. And of course she didn't know that I was going to do this. So go ahead. <laughs> And then we, while, while she's coming to the Zoom podium, um, I, and I'm just looking at the, I can't see all of the comments and questions, but we certainly will get to them. Um, but no matter what type of business model you have, right, there is a process and a procedure for it. Because I think someone put something, uh, put, I can't, I, I can't see it now, but I think she's a mental health uh, therapist. Uh, want to know, you know, what to do. It doesn't matter. And, and we're here to help you. So let's stay connected. Uh, it doesn't matter what, what um, product or service you're offering. You have a process, you have a procedure, you have a plan for it. So let's just put it, you know, let's just put it in writing. This is about getting your ideas, getting your goals, getting your vision in writing. So let's start the, the process of writing getting getting that down getting that getting and prior down. to Aisha coming to the podium zoom podium there are certain things about your business that are creative that uh and we you know in order for us to walk through that plan you have to be creative you have to think out of the box mm -hmm. there are other parts of your business that is strategy it's numbers there is no thinking outside the box it's about structure so mm -hmm. what you have to do is recognize what part of your piece is innovative and creative and what part of your piece should you follow a, 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 a platform. Your profit, loss, your profit and loss statement is structured. It, there is, there's a standard accounting operating procedure that's involved with that that's not creative. Your um, business plan, even though there are parts of it that is created, the, 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 the book has been written on how to do that. So don't try to go outside of the, don't go into waters that haven't been crossed. <laughs> they in the waters that we have, we know what works. So those are the things that we want to, uh, invest. this is a part of investing into the structure piece while you creating uh, and being innovative with your baby because your baby going to need diapers. Your baby's going to need milk. Every baby that comes in the world, they need those. So we're providing the diapers and the milk and the clothes. Now, Miss Aisha and Kate, if you want to say it, something as well. And Alan, as we. And talk. Alan, yes. Yeah, and, I'll and start. Huh? I'll start. Um, and I do see someone asked about repeating the information. Um, Sheila, you said that's Tuesday, April 12th um, from 6 to 7. And we'll send a link out to everyone who registered. She, before you move on, um, some people said they're in the fast. They want to attend the um, informal, but they're in the fast track from 6 to 8. I don't know. Uh, you know, I, don't I, know can do, I, can, I, can, I can make it 5 to 5 to 6. Five, five to six, yes. Well, how about this? Five to six thirty. That means that for you guys that get off of work at five o'clock, y'all can get on online at six. And for those you guys who have to do the fast track, it'll be enough to where we can accommodate. And you, you're not required to stay the whole time. I would just be available for questions and answers. Now that I put myself out there. But there are some synergies, you know, between what uh, we're discussing and what they're um, getting in fast track. And so mm -hmm. you know, um, getting what she what Shelia um, is going to share with you in that session is is going to be part and parcel to some of the things that you're going to hear in fast track. And so, um, like Cheryl said, um, like Shelia said, a lot of the information we're sharing is basic knowledge that's common um, to every business type, every business form. And so um, you're going to hear some of the things in Fast Track that you're hearing in this session and vice versa. So, you know, um, if, you, if you have to go to the Fast Track session, you know, 5, 10, 15 minutes later than necessary because there's a specific point that she was going over that's relevant to this content, you know, um, I don't think there would be a big issue there, but you definitely want to continue to stay on that fast track, you know, attendance role, because there are some requirements there in order to graduate. Um, Absolutely uh, right. And I will say that if you take a look in the chat, you know, I posted some things that you can take 
into consideration um, when you're thinking about your ideas? You know, um, you know, like what products or services have frustrated you as a customer, mm -hmm. right? What things have inspired you to find ways to improve them? That's a way to um, promote or find ideas that may be beneficial for you to start a product, start developing a product or a service. And so if you take a look at the chat, save the chat, you'll see some additional comments and questions there that might be. Mm -hmm. And yeah. if you care to share your business, um, someone asked about, I think, the name of Nini's business because they want to support her, uh, which is great. Yep. <laughs> In the chat. So um, I didn't even yeah. see that. Thank you. all <laughs> I That's created a planner. Um, I think you have one, right? Wait, you're here, Miss Cheryl. Mm -hmm. um, you have one of my planners, don't you? Do I have one of your planners? I don't know whether it was you or someone else from your organization, but a whole team. I don't of think you guys, it was me, but I would love to get one. Let, a yeah, whole team of yeah, have them. This is what it looks yeah. like. Yeah, beautiful celestial healing. Yeah, I remember. Yes. Yep, yep. So I'm gonna get. I don't have one, but I would love to purchase one. So put your website. Uh, your Thank website address. Okay? I'm typing that in right now. Thanks. So okay, much. great. Because that's what we have to do. Hey, we have to support each other. It's about networking. It's about networking and supporting each other. Um, and we're going to think, you know, my, my little brain is thinking about, um, okay, maybe we need to have a little a networking after we finish the four weeks where we can all meet each other and find out about the business. But we're not, we're not going to put that out there. But anyway, yes, uh, if you would like to put your website address in the chat so others can, if you already have it, um, please do so. Yeah, so the other thing I wanted to add to everyone, as long as you registered, I will send an email out this afternoon that includes a survey. We want to know um, what we did well, what we need to work on for next week, and um, how to move forward and how we can continue to assist your business. Um, also, I will send a copy of the presentation for, for today to everyone who registered. Um, I'll also add a contact list for all of our partners that were included in this collaboration. This has definitely be, been well received, everyone. So this was absolutely needed. Great idea for the brainstormers for this um, event. I think it was a, a great idea and obviously it's very much needed. So I'll send out that contact list. Um, we are working on a recording. So I might not have that link to you today, but hopefully either tomorrow or early next week, I can provide you with a recording um, to this event as well. And then I'll turn it over to our other um, partners. Aisha, can you put the Eventbrite link in the chat um, or they can go to the SBA website and register because someone just asked where do you register at? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll put a link in the chat. And please share this information with any and everybody that you know, because um, this is the foundation. You know, this, this is the groundwork. Hey. And I, I know a lot of businesses, I meet a lot of businesses who are already in business, been in business five years, 10 years, and even sometimes longer that need to and have does not have a strategic plan written. Uh, and some of their, the pieces of their infrastructure um, is really, really, really weak uh, because of not taking these steps initially. Someone just posted in the chat that they're starting a trucking business. They don't know where to start, but I have an initial item, i.e. SAM, tax ID, and bank account. Um, Cheryl, did you or Alan, because you all are a resource partner who does a lot of the counseling for startup business, did either one of you or both of you put your um, information in the chat so they can reach out to one of you all for um, assistance? Sure. Sure. That's not a problem. I'm waiting on Kate so she can, uh, this is with the USC Columbia Incubator. We want to definitely hear from her today. Um, I don't have anything to really add. I would just say that it's really important that you attend each of the weeks if your calendar kind of permits you to because each week we will be building upon the concepts that we've kind of initiated. We, we made the concept the marketing, the finance, and then kind of your target audience, those four areas, ways for you to understand how to 
start your business and then grow your business and then reach more people and do those in innovative, creative ways. So we're excited to see you all join us for the other weeks. And if you have any other questions, um, yes, the recordings will be sent out when Aisha sends out the survey and all those other items um, with the PowerPoint slides and all that fun stuff. So everyone should have received the workbook already. And then before the finance week, you will also get a Excel sheet shared with each of you to be able to walk through Shelia's presentation with her. So if you have any other questions or concerns, definitely all the partners go ahead and throw your contact information in the chat. I've seen a few people ask for that. Um, but we're so happy that you are all here today and we can't wait to see y'all every other Thursday this month. It's just going to be Thursday, Thursday mornings with us. <laughs> uh, the role of the incubator, we serve, we're actually going through a rebranding period, but we serve all startups and all small businesses. We have affiliate members and we have resident members. And so we're able to have host people within the building if they need office space or if they need storage space or if they need management space. And then we also allow them to use some of our common areas. We host our own networking events, our own programming and our own workshops. Um, so if you're interested, definitely feel free in reaching out to me. I'm the programs and communication director. So I'm over all of that information and our website is um, you applied for the incubator, but was denied. Well, I started in July and I don't run things like my <laughs> former person. So I'm not sure what that was for, but definitely reach out again and um, feel free to email me and we'll set up an introductory meeting. I always um, host an introductory meeting with those interested, kind of share information about how we run things and how your business is ran. And then we can find ways that we can work together. So. I'm excited to kind of look forward to seeing how I can serve more of y'all. And then of course, a lot of our things with SBDC being in the building, we also have some other resources, SCORE and PTAC in the building. And then anytime we might not be a good resource, I send them over to the Women's Business Center or SBA for grant funding or Aisha for city help. So lots of people that come together that kind of work together. That's all about the community part of it all. So that's what we're encouraging through this is for y'all to network as a community and also for y'all to tap into our network throughout the community. Yep, save the yes, chat. Yes, Mike Ward had a great point. Save the chat before you log out so you can have mm -hmm. everyone's contact information, questions and that fun stuff. And, and Angela didn't mention this, uh, but she said it before. Um, no, like, make sure you're positioned. Like, there's a step before you go to someone like the SBA, you need to have all of this groundwork laid out, right, Angela? Or before you go to a bank, or know when to go to the other resource partners, right? So, this is the groundwork. I'm just a small peon in this world. So, exactly. So, someone has asked how to, how do you save the chat? I think I've just seen something pop up by click something it went so fast. It's three little dots. Like when you see it says at the bottom of the uh, chat, it says to everyone. And then you'll see a little, looks like a little sheet of paper to the right. And there's a little smiley face and it's three little dots next to that. And if you click on that, then you can uh, select save chat. This was great. I hope you all got something, got some valuable information out of this. Yep. This is this was thumbs was up. much needed. Yeah, this was much needed. I know we get it all the time here at SBA. Like I said, we don't do a lot of counseling, but we get a lot of people who need assistance, who are looking for assistance. And that's the first thing I tell them. You need to get your business plan. You need to get structured. So thank you all for coming on today and being with us this hour and a half and look forward to seeing you all next week. I know I'm not supposed to close out, but I just had to say that. <laughs> Well, Angela has said that and she has closed us out. So guys, we appreciate you. And we're actually closing on time. We are very uh, cognizant, cognizant of your time. Uh, so that's important to us. And we look forward 
to seeing you next week, uh, April the, what week is that? April the 12th. April, from no, 5 April, to 6.30. Yeah, yes. And, and also April the 14th. the 14th for the meeting. Also, one thing, as a tax accountant, I would be, uh, I would not be doing my job if I didn't tell you that the deadline for filing your personal taxes is April the 18th. You can file an extension, which is the 4868. It does give you, it does give you an extension to file but it does not give you an extension to pay. So just keep that in mind and know we're not extending anything anytime soon. So that was my, my schmeal, uh, so to speak. So thank you guys uh, for this opportunity and uh, we will see you next week. Do your field work. Your pre-work or homework, whichever you want. Do your investigations, let us know next week. Organize and stay on a few minutes so we can have a, a little run through before we. Okay. Thank you, yes, everyone, ma'am. for joining us. Y'all Thank you all so much.